Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Truly, God is good, and he is worthy to be praised. And I thank God for another opportunity to come into his house. I thank him for being able to stand here and look at all of your beautiful faces and just to see God's hand upon your life. Amen. So as I was, you know, school year ended. Thank you, Jesus. Made it. Amen. And the Lord started ministering to me. I'm going to be coming out of Psalm. I'm, I'm going to do one verse out of Psalm 91, and that's verse 1. And the Lord was dealing with me, and as I was laying before him and talking to him and meditating, the Lord asked, where is your dwelling place? Where is your dwelling place? Psalm 91.1 in the King James Version says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then I want to read it to you out of the Passion Translation. And it says, When you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God Most High. So God is not going to make you dwell in the secret place. That's your choice. It's your choice. We have choices every day. So God is saying, though, that he that dwelleth in the secret place, we're hidden and we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen? God is committed to deliver, protect, and cover his people who pursue him the ones who make him their dwelling place. So as I was listening to the songs that we're singing, and we sing these songs, but I hope that we understand that what we're singing is it real. Are you really willing to chase after God with all that you have, with all that you possess? And what are you willing to lay down to chase after him? What do you need to put to the side to chase after God? What is hindering your walk with God today? What is hindering your walk? And God is saying he is committed to take care of his children. He is committed. He says he will protect us. He will keep us. Psalm 91 is a beautiful psalm of protection, but it's a conditional, some conditional promises in there. Because we can't go out and do our own thing. And we call ourselves hiding under the shadow of God. There are requirements that God expects of us. God has placed principles in place for us. Amen? So he said he's willing. He's calling us out of the fringes for us to make him our dwelling place. God doesn't want to be a casual or convenient friend that we go to only when we need help. Amen? God is not our part-time lover. We sing that soul, Jesus, lover of my soul, that you are my first love then does our actions reflect that? Amen? God's saying he wants to be our source, our number one source. Amen? Even for our entertainment. Strength, comfort, protection. God says, I want you to run to me and draw from me before you try to draw from anything else. Because we know those tactics that we have. We know those things that we run to when we are feeling overwhelmed. Amen. Now, some, and prayerfully, no one in here, but some people run to beer or alcohol or smoking. Okay? There's so many secret sins in people's lives, and we tend to run to those things that bring us comfort. But God is saying, I want to be the one that you run to. I want you to draw from my will. Because he, he says, we build cisterns that are broken, and we're trying to pour into them, and they have holes. And God is saying, listen, I need you to draw from me. But we can't draw from him if we're not dwelling in that secret place. Because when we see and we watch the weather forecast, what do we do? If we know that it's going to rain, what do we do? We get an umbrella. Okay? Rain jacket. If you like rain boots, you get your rain boots, whatever the case may be. But you prepare yourself. But what do we do to prepare ourselves when God has sent us the warnings. God has sent us the warnings. Now, are we ignoring them? 
And that's why he's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes people override that. They say, I felt this hesitation, but I pressed on anyway. And the Lord is saying, I sent that as a warning to you to, to heed, to, make, to seek me before you make a step, that there was something just not quite right about it. Young people, you're invited to a party, and especially on the college scene. And I'm going to be honest with you, Christian college is no different. They have parties too. So when they say, come on and let's do this, and we know that it's not in line with what we're supposed to be doing, and the Holy Spirit says, no, that's not where you're to go. Don't override that. Pay attention. Heed the warning. Because you don't know what God is protecting you from. And young ladies that are going off to college, and I know your parents have told you this, if you go somewhere and you leave your plate or your cup unattended, get a new one. Don't go there and say, I don't want to waste that soda. Waste it. Because everybody is not your friend. And some people are out there just trying to entrap you. So be mindful of that. And pastors used to tell our daughters that all the time. If you go someplace, I don't care where it is, and it's unattended, then get me a new one. Because if somebody tries to slip something in your food or in your drink, it's not worth it. Don't ignore the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. Amen? High schoolers, getting ready to go to middle school. Like Pastor Melanie said, dare to be different. We're not supposed to fit in. You're not supposed to fit in. Because God says that you are a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. That he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen? So you have to think about where is your dwelling place. So when you see a natural storm coming, hurricane season, who is not going to prepare their house if they say a hurricane is coming? But what are we doing about our spiritual house? What are we doing about our spiritual house? How much time are we spending in the Word on a daily basis? Not every other day, not only on just on Sundays and Wednesdays, but having a consistent relationship with God through his word. And God is saying, Jesus is on his way back. Are you going to be ready? We see the signs of the times. And yet, the church seems to be quaking more than the world is. And God is saying, I've been sending out alarms. I have been sending out alarms, and my people are not heeding it. And what is the nature of an alarm? What is an alarm supposed to do? It's a warning. It's a warning. I mean, suppose a smoke detector only made out a little bell sound. And if you've got noise and stuff going on around you, and that's what the Lord is saying, he knows what's going on around us. He sees the chaos that's going on around us. He says, and I'm sending out this alarm. He says, I filled you with my spirit. He says, and I tell you things and you don't pay attention. You're just going on about life like, it's, like the norm, and you're missing. We're missing his presence. God says, I want you to come into the secret place. I want to spend some time with you. I want to spend some time with you. But if we're always rushing to and fro, how is God speaking to us? And yet we said we have questions of the Lord, and God says, I have the answers but you won't be still enough to let me minister to you. And then you're wondering why things are going, wreaking, are going haywire, but you don't have a prayer life. You're not praying. And not just these popcorn prayers. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. But of all the time that God gives us in the course of the week, we should be able to give God more than just a minute in prayer. We should be able to do that. And then we're wondering why isn't things flowing in my life like I see them flowing in Pastor Melanie's life? Well, Pastor Melanie is practicing the spiritual discipline of prayer, being in her word, fasting. We don't just wait to fast at Lent season or at the beginning of the year. Some things that you're facing will only come out by prayer and fasting. But if you're just looking at the situation, you're missing what God is trying to say to you. He's saying it's time now for you to turn down your plate. 
It's time now for you to get back into the closet. Because, see, the enemy tries to make us think that the closet is a bad place. But God says that I'm in the closet. And that's why I want you to dwell at it. It's time for the people of God to get back into the closet of prayer and seeking God's face and spending time with him. Because we say, I, I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing after you to the point that it's comfortable for me. But when you say that you're chasing after something, you don't chase after it even when it's uncomfortable. Young ladies, as you're getting ready to go off and pursue your bachelor's degree and you're going to have those times, all of your work is going to be due on one night. Are you going to give up? No, you're not. You're going to pursue. You're going to keep running. And you're going to keep pressing through. I'm going to get this assignment done. By the grace of God, it's going to be finished, and I'm going to be successful. But what the enemy does, he tries to wear us down. He says the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen? So he wants to steal our joy. He wants to steal, steal our endurance. He wants to stop us from being from persevering. Amen. Even when it comes down to our giving, God knows what is due in your household. He does. He knows. But what God is saying, I want you to trust me because God is saying, I don't need your money. He doesn't. God does not need our money. But he wants our obedience. And that, Lord, I trust you enough that even though I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, do, but I'm trusting you. I'm going to give this to you knowing that you're going to supply all of my needs because I can't beat God giving. You cannot beat God giving. And we want to speak open heaven with a closed hand. And God is saying in order for that heaven to be open. That hand has to be opened. Because we're, we want to tap into a biblical principle without following through. See, we want the benefits that come from being in the secret place without having to sacrifice anything. And so we say, Lord, you're the lover of my soul. You're the one that I run to. But when you're woken up in the middle of the night, are you running to the refrigerator? Are you turning on Netflix? Are you turning on a reality show? Or are you beginning to seek the face of God? And that's why God is asking us today, where is your dwelling place? Who's going to go out into a rainstorm without having an umbrella? So how is it that we try to start our day without covering it in prayer, without covering it in prayer. But it's like, Lord, I've got to get to work because I've got to be there by a certain time. You know, the task I have to do, nothing is more important than his presence. Nothing is more important than spending time with God. Amen. John 15, 7 says, and I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. It says, but if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully, powerfully within you, then you can ask whatsoever you desire and it will be done. But some of us are trying to take the word of God and say, Lord, you said whatever I want, I can have it. That if I delight myself in you, you will give me the desires of my heart. So we want the desires of our heart given, but we want, don't want to delight ourselves in the Lord. The Lord says that if my words abide in you and you remain in me, then you're going to produce good fruit. Amen? But the fruit is not going to come if you're not abiding in the right place. You've got to get, we've got to get back to that secret place. You've got to find your, that secret place in God. That, and even when, as Daniel was in the lion's den, God didn't protect him from the lion's den, from having to go. But God kept him in it. Amen. God didn't protect the Hebrew boys from having to go be thrown into the fire, but he preserved them in it. So if he did that for them, how much more is he going to do for us? So that doesn't mean that we have a trouble-free life. 
It doesn't mean that stress doesn't come, but God is saying, I'm able to keep you in the midst of this challenge that you're facing. Amen. When those papers are going to be due and they're 10 pages and you're like, why didn't I start this earlier? God is saying, I'm going to keep you even in the midst of that. He's kept us even raising our children. We wanted to pull our hair out. And when you see them doing things that you would choose for them not to do, God protects us. He doesn't, he doesn't keep it from us, but he protected us and he preserved us in it. When you go through those seasons and you see them making mistakes and you just want to give up and throw in the towel, God keeps us. So God, as I said, I'm protecting you from going to school, but I'm going to keep you while you're there. You may not have wanted that teacher that you're getting, but God says, I'm going to keep you with that teacher in the midst of it. And that's, what we need to te- and that's what God is trying to tell us, that even through the hard trials that you're going through, God is right there. He has never left you, nor has he forsaken you. He says, I'm keeping you in the midst of it. Because just like Paul says, he wanted the Lord to remove that thorn from his flesh. We don't know what that thorn was. But God says, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. When when you're coming up against deadlines and challenges, and when you're trying to make a difference and dare to be different, and people are saying, why are you trying to be so religious or why are you trying to be so holy? God says, I will keep you in the midst of that. Amen? So an alarm sounds to get us to make a move. An action needs to occur. We have our alarms that the Lord allows us to hear in the morning. And then you have a choice whether you're going to get up or not. Now, if you choose to keep hitting that snooze button, and then you got to rush to get to work because you didn't get up like you were supposed to, you can't blame God because he says, I allowed you to hear it. Now, it's your choice whether you're going to get up and move or not. Amen? We tell our children, don't do certain things, and they think that we're just trying to make life miserable for them. But we know we've already been there. Don't cheat on that test because they have a way of figuring it out. And it comes back to bite you. Amen? Real hard. So that's what we, and we tell them that. And God is saying, I have put commands in place. I have given you a plumb line to live by. And he's like, and if you stay under my shadow, there's protection. Okay? But if there's thunder and lightning and you choose to go outside, and you don't have no kind of umbrella or anything, you choose to go out there and you're struck by lightning, you can't blame God because he says that the protection was there for you. I gave you the warning signs. I showed you. Amen? I showed you what to do. You chose to ignore it. Now you're reaping it. And I'm seeing that some things I'm seeing that people are going through, they're reaping the seeds that were sown weeks ago. And that's why the Bible says we reap what we sow. And it's only because of God's grace that we don't reap to the, the, to the level that we should have. And that's why we say, Lord, we thank you for the hedge about us because, God, you didn't, you didn't expose me in my mess. You covered me. You did prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You didn't bring me to an open shame because we're here. But you, when you hear about these, even these pastors, and it's like, Lord, why did you let them be exposed like that? God is saying, I gave them a chance. I told them in private. I had a conversation with them. I sent my messengers to tell them, it's time for you to correct your ways. And then if you refuse to, God says, I'm pulling the cover. And God is pulling the cover off the things that's happening in the body of Christ. And God is saying, it's time for my people to wake up. We can't live like the world is living. God is saying, come into the secret place. He says, there's protection under my shadow. And we have a choice. We have a choice every day. We can let people irritate us to the point that we step out under the shadow of God and react in our flesh. Or we can stay in the presence of God and know that God, in the midst of this abuse, you're keeping me. You have a choice. You always have a choice. 
And God is saying the choice is yours today. Do you choose to walk in line with my word? Are you going to heed the alarm that I'm sending out? How many of us have been hearing that Jesus is coming back? It's not time to be playing around now. It's not time to say, you know what? I'm just going to step out of the church for a while. I'm going to step out of my relationship with God for a while. I want to live my life, and then I'll come back to him before. You don't know if you're going to make it back. You don't know if you're going to make it back. So, God, I want to stay in the safety. I want to stay in the lane that you've set for me. I want to stay in the lane that you've set for me, God. That place of safety and protection and comfort. Amen? So God is sounding the alarm. He tells us what to do every day. He says to put on the whole armor of God so that you're able to stand against the wiles of the enemy, to put on the armor. You can't put on the armor if you're not praying. You have to have a prayer life. And for those that have not been blessed with the gift of tongues that's made manifest yet, the church is open. We're going to have prayer this coming Friday. God is not trying to keep the gift from you. He's not. But are you willing to pursue him so that that gift is made manifest in your life? Because when we pray in tongues, the enemy has no idea. We don't even know what we're saying unless the Lord gives us an interpretation of it. So when we pray in tongues, the enemy has no idea what we're saying. We don't know what we're saying. It's a direct link to God. And if you want that gift, God says it's yours. But you're not going to get it surfing Netflix. You're not going it, to get it watching reality TV. You're not going to get it staying in the bed and sleeping. Because God is saying, I have it for you. I mean, you think about it. What if Jesus had never went, gone to the cross? If he had said, you know what, uh -uh, this is too hard. The pain that I'm going to face, I can't do this. We're, we would not be here. We wouldn't be here. So what is it that's so important in our lives that we can't give up for God? What is so important? So me and my family, we're on a challenge. The caller hasn't joined us yet, but he will. Because I'm telling them, out of all the time God gives us, we need to set a time that that TV is off. The TV is off. And they can't even use the Bible on the phone because you know what? The notifications come up. Then somebody done posted something on Facebook or some Instagram post has come up. So it's like, no, you need to get a physical Bible. Go back to the Word. Amen. Yes, the world has made it very convenient for us. We don't have any excuse. But sometimes you need to pick up the Word of God. So that way I'm not seeing the notifications. I'm not seeing the text messages that's come in. I said, you can put your phone on, do not disturb. We're past the point of five minutes. We used to tell the kids, just give the Lord five minutes. They thought they was going to die. So now I'm saying, you know what? At this point in your life, you're going to give them at least 30 un un uninterrupted minutes. And you don't have to do it in the room with me. You can go to your place, what room you want to go to. But how can we bring God any less than this? Is our lives so busy that God has no space? And that's why God is saying, where is your dwelling place? Where is your dwelling place? Where are you sitting at today? Are you sitting in the seat of anxiety and worry and doubt and unbelief? Or are you sitting in the seat of faith, knowing that God is able, God is willing to do and bless you above, beyond, exceedingly, more than you could ever think or ask for? But God is not just throwing out his blessings. We can't just reap the blessings of God. And that's why when people even come to us for prayer, yes, we pray for them. But first, you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because I can't, I can't give the promises of God are not for the unbelievers. They're for the believers. That's a distinguishing factor. They're for the believers. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? It's not just about being a good person and doing right things. Our parents taught us right they taught us to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. But that is not going to get us into heaven. It's those that confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, recognizing the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what saves our soul. 
And when we talk to people, it's like, yes, I will pray for you, but you need to come to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because this promise is that's for his children. And you've got to have a made-up mind. You have to have a made-up mind. And our young ladies are going to be going away to college. They're going to be faced with decisions and choices. But regardless of the choices that you make, you are always loved. There is nothing that you can do that will stop God from loving you. Nothing. And we can't talk about you because we done did our own mess. We're just trying to prevent you all from making the same mistakes that we made. And that's like Pastor Melanie said, there are going to be some cute guys on campus. They're going to be looking good. Come on to this party. You know, they're going to see that smile and, like, and to try to, you know, use sweet words. God, help me to stand, to withstand. Help me to stand for holiness, even on those college campuses. Amen. Because that's what God is calling us to. Where is your dwelling place? You may stand to your feet. Where is your dwelling place? We have to get back to the spiritual disciplines of prayer and fasting and being in our word. Because it just can't be how the Lord feeds us on Sunday and that's supposed to just take us through. God, I mean, Jesus himself had to separate himself and he had to go off and pray. So what makes us think we don't have to? How can we not have a life of prayer that we're seeking the face of God on a daily basis? And some of us, there's been warning signs in our marriages. And pastor used to say, you see the smoke? Don't wait for the fire to blaze to get help. Put it out now. God shows you, wait a minute. You're not being a wise steward of your money. You need to change your spending habits. You need to cut that card up. You need to put some things to the side. Amen, a budget. And I'm telling you, it's not a bad thing. I'm living on one. It's not a bad thing. And there's so much liberty. Even with the budget, there is still so much liberty. Amen. We don't have to buy everything that we see. We don't have to go every place we want to go to. I mean, God still gives us that liberty, that flexibility. But God is saying, I want you to be wise stewards of everything that I've placed in your hands. But the first thing we need to be a wise steward of is his spirit. Because we walk through life like we don't have no help. We talk like we don't have help sometimes. And we've got the Holy Spirit living inside of us. I mean, we've got easy access. And we walk around like we're struggling on our own, trying to do this by ourselves. And Jesus has said, I've given you the comforter. I've given you a helper. All you need to do is tap into it. I mean, I'm at work and I'll say, Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, change my perspective at this time. Holy Spirit, help me to see this situation differently. Holy Spirit, help me not to go into this store and not to spend what I shouldn't be spending. He is a very present help. A very present help. When that spirit of anxiety and depression comes, Holy Spirit, bring me my joy back. Let me see who I am in you. That God, you said I don't have to be anxious about anything. All I need to do is with prayer, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, to let my request be made known unto God, and that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. That's what the Word says. With thanksgiving. Praise your way through. Praise your way through. And you know, and the thing about it is, is that we're not adding any new scriptures to our spiritual inventory. We're still trying to live on those scriptures that we lived on when we was a child. And the Lord says, you've grown up now. You need to be adding scripture to what you already know. Add to it. 
There are probably books in the Bible. People didn't even know there were book, those names was in the Bible. God says, add to it. The Holy Spirit is here to help us. Every day, every second of the day, there is nothing that you have to go through by yourself. Holy Spirit, I'm taking this class. I don't know how to do it. Give me the understanding. Give me wisdom, revelation, and knowledge in my classwork, in my relationships, in the choices that I'm making. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. He's like, I'm right here to help you. But he's not going to force himself on you. He is a gentleman. But he says, but if you cry out to me, he says he will answer.